total incompetence. Every time Biden and his baleful sidekick, Kamala Harris, go abroad, they embarrass themselves and America. This is what happens when you put totally mediocre, unprincipled machine politicians in the White House, where Biden's been an epic failure on the global stage. Have we ever seen a president who's been more disastrous, done more damage on the world stage in his first year than Biden? So one of the most obvious common themes that we're seeing uh, that Fox News pundits and other right wing anchors are pointing out is that under the Trump administration, Putin didn't invade Ukraine. But while Biden has been in office now under his current administration and under the Obama administration in 2014, Putin made those moves. But of course, they never go into depth or add any context as to why that is. Only the fact that, you know, I guess Trump's masculinity and just pure manliness, you know, just kept Putin at bay. Because after all, we saw the clips where Trump was like, I, I told him, don't do it. I said, I'll talk to Putin. I said, don't do it <laughs> on that uh, podcast that he had with those two guys. Waging war on our energy industry, increasing Putin's leverage. His extremist climate regulations are blocking our gas exports. Biden's gone from gas lighting to gas lying. But again, and then also he goes straight into immediately after just pointing that out that, you know, America's, you know, stepping into clean, green energy. That's that's done it as well, because, you know, under the Trump administration, we wanted the Keystone. You know, Biden, he's he's not moving towards that. You know, as, as right wing uh, pundits continuously say and politicians that, you know, it, it's really just that America has to maintain control over the world oil markets. That that's what's going to maintain not only peace here, but everywhere else in the world. If, if, if we're number one, you see, that, that's all that it takes. And look at the result. War through weakness. The worst in Europe since Hitler and World War II. That's what these great foreign policy geniuses have delivered with their years of experience. Now they claim Biden has led NATO, rallied the allies. What a load of old toot. Biden couldn't lead his way out of his own bedroom, let alone lead NATO. He's never led on anything in his life and certainly not on this following Congress, following the French, following the Germans. My man said, oh, what a load of old toot. I ain't never heard that before, but I like that. I'm gonna remember that forever. But he said Biden couldn't lead his way out of his own bedroom, which, you know, there's certainly some legitimacy there. But it, however, let's let's look at the last two Republican presidencies, okay? Okay, under Donald Trump, you know, where when he would go to world conferences and world leaders would laugh at him to his face, you know, all just, you know, the history of fraudulence and the fact that he's just a giant walking lie, the fact that we were totally ill prepared for COVID, you know, the fact that all he really did while he was there was lower taxes for the ultra rich, especially as time continues to drag on with the sunset provisions and what have you. Uh, and, and then let's take a look at the previous one after that, you know, the George W. Bush administration, you know, the whole like collapsing of, you know, the world financial markets and the whole, you know, us getting deeper involved into, you know, the Middle East and, and all and war and stuff like that. You know, you, you, you see, it, it, it's like, you know, there's definitely legitimate arguments against Biden. We make them here all the time. But it's like, you know, y'all's last two heroes were like literally just like the worst, the absolute worst. Total incompetence. Every time Biden and his baleful sidekick Kamala Harris go abroad, they embarrass themselves and America. This is what happens when you put totally mediocre, unprincipled machine politicians in the White House. And then they always point to the fact that, you know, Putin did this under the Biden administration. Oh, look, Kim Jong-un just launched a, a missile in a test, you know, things like that, as if it wouldn't have happened under Trump. But whenever they do these things, Trump praises them for it. You know, he says, you know, Kim Jong-un, you know, that's a smart guy. You know, he's, he's strong. He's a strong man. You know, he loves Putin for the same reason. He's strong. You know, you got to admit he's really smart for that. You know, people who, who, who are authoritarians and dictators, as we talk about here all the time, you know, those are the type of people that he congratulates for doing what they want because it's strong. So, again, it's like the, if he encur he literally encourages them to do what they do and he finds he, he finds appraisal in it. You know, he he thinks that it's a beautiful thing when people do terrible things because they can and because they have the power. And that's obviously is how he works and operates his businesses and always has, you know, ripping off contractors and the whole lot. So again, you know, the fact that this guy's still coming in 2024, here comes Donald Trump. The fact that they have no one else to replace him just really just reflects not just the state of the Republican party and the democratic party, but just the United States as a whole. This is where we're at. But at the same time, there's, you know, much room for opportunity, for leadership and for just everyday people to stand up and make a difference. 
uh, when times are really chaotic, that's when there's the most opportunity to make change.